That was the music of the legendary southern rock group, the Allman Brothers Band. The group's co-founder, Greg Allman, died on Saturday at the age of 69. Music journalist Alan Light, who co-wrote Greg Allman's memoir, My Cross to Bear, joins us by phone. Well, uh, we still don't know the, the details of, of precisely what happened, but uh, Greg had been uh, battling ill health for a long time. He had a liver transplant uh, in, I think, 2010. Um, recently, he had canceled all of his shows for the remainder of the year um, as he, you know, continued to battle various issues. And uh, I guess we'll find out more detail, but it's, uh, you know, it's, it's always surprising but not shocking to get this news because uh, it's, he, he, he'd been struggling for a while. How would you describe his music for people who are, might not be familiar with the Allman Brothers Band? Well, the Allman Brothers really laid, you know, they did lay the, the template for what became known as, as Southern Rock, and really what they did was merge um, a more kind of jazz-based, improvisational, exploratory kind of music with a really strong blues foundation, especially Greg's singing, which was very much in kind of a traditional blues soul model. Um, and so what they did was very, uh, you know, was both very physical and emotional and kind of earthy and also very musical and and uh, and uh, exploring lots of lots of different directions lots of longer jams with really always top-notch extraordinary players what do you think it is Alan in this era where pop music stars really managed to cut through how is it that someone like Greg Allman and his band has managed to withhold withstand decades of time well, what they did was something that was that truly was groundbreaking. Um, you know, nobody had brought those different elements into a band before, um, with multiple lead guitar players and two drummers, and more complicated rhythms that were also very, uh, you know, very easy to to sort of relate to and, and understand. Um, you know, they did something that that, there's, that truly no other band was able to do, and with Greg's really powerful, uh, forceful, and, and hard-feeling voice out in the front of that, uh, it was a, an extraordinary combination of ingredients. And we know that he was expected out on tour, but his doctors had told him recently to, to withhold that, right? Yes, he had canceled uh, the most recent series of dates, and it actually canceled through the rest of the year. Um, there were rumors of maybe a month, six weeks ago, that he had entered hospice care, which was denied at the time, and I don't know if that's true or not true, but clearly uh, he was, you know, he was not in great shape during these recent months, and they, you know, did, did want to give him uh, a more extended time to, to try to get better. And a man who overcame a great deal, his mother raised him, his brother, who he found as a father figure, his father was shot, is that correct? Uh, that is correct. Uh, Greg, Greg's father was, was murdered when Greg was just two years old. Um, his brother, his, you know, who he, who he idolized and who really put the whole concept for the Allman Brothers Band together uh, died in a motorcycle accident, you know, in his early 20s. The next year, the band's bass player died. Um, you know, Greg has just been, you know, it was a lifetime that was surrounded by tragedy and continually walking through fire. And, uh, you know, he was the one who survived. He was the one who, who held on, you know, at least uh, un until today. Yeah, incredible life. And uh, he even said in his memoir that he said he spent years overindulging in women, drugs, and alcohol before getting sober in the mid-1990s. What were the last few years of his life like, Alan? Well, he was, you know, he was still working. He was still playing, um, you know, as long as he possibly could. There was a new album, we'll find out soon, um, that, that was close to completion, if not actually completed, that he had been working on. There may still be, you know, a, a new album to hear from him. Um, you know, he had, to, he had to pace himself. He couldn't maintain the same sort of touring uh, schedule that he did early in his life, but he continued to work, you know, as long as he could. And, uh, you know, I wrote... I, I, I co-wrote that his memoir with him, and spent a lot of time with him. Uh, I guess about that's about five years ago that the, that the book was done, and you know the, he had he had uh, better times. He had up and it was up and down for sure. But when there was the ability to be out there making music, the ability to be singing, that's clearly when he was when he was most alive. And Alan, when you talk about his legacy, what do you think his ultimate footprint on rock will be? Well, I think that, you know, again, the Allman Brothers really were architects for, a, for an entire movement 
uh, for an entire style, um, an entire approach to to making rock and roll. Um, not all the southern rock bands that followed, you know, they 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 couldn't compete with what it was that the almonds were doing. They just, you know, th these guys were better players than everybody else. But what they did was really. Uh, shape a whole style and approach to music and and an approach to playing live I mean when they did things like the the residency that they would do at the Beacon Theater in here in New York um, that they did every spring for years and years this notion of a band setting up and playing 15 20 shows at a time and really gathering their fans uh, in this sort of annual event, uh, these just you know those weren't things that other bands did. They didn't have that kind of following, and they weren't able to to be interesting night after night after night, where people would want to keep coming back like that. Yeah, and a man with an incredible legacy and a powerful voice. He lived uh, he lived a bunch of lives. Yeah. Um, you know, this was somebody who was definitely in you know in overtime in a lot of ways, and and he was very aware of that. He was very haunted by. The, the tragedies around his uh, that had that had happened around his life certainly around his his relationship with his brother which he clearly thought about every single day till the end um, you know uh, again we're it's always it's always awful to hear it uh, but this is certainly somebody who you know put in his time and then some yeah he said he still felt his brother's presence even long after his death Greg Allman dead at 69 thank you for joining us Alan Mike thank you so much